Centuries ago, from the center of the greatest empire on earth, the Mongolian war machine was unleashed southwards to defeat and conquer what today is China. Over a hundred thousand warriors carved a path of terror and destruction through the central plains until all that stood before them was a single fortress, a bastion of the Southern Song Dynasty. This is the story of the will of a great Mongol Khan, of two unyielding adversaries, and a siege that changed world history. Chinese historian Chu Kaji and Mongolian ethnologist Jagal Borjigen bring to life the events at the exact place where 750 years ago, the whip of God broke. By the mid 13th century, the Mongolian empire had conquered Central Asia, reaching toward Eastern Europe. the great Genghis Khan and his successors ultimately reigned over a vast region stretching from the Arctic Circle to the shores of the Black Sea. Further expansion saw Baghdad burned to the ground in 1258, then Syria also fell, opening the door to an invasion of Africa. The Jin Dynasty of Northern China was defeated by Mongol armies in 1234. The Mongolian Empire then focused on crushing the Southern Song Dynasty and claiming all of China. Genghis Khan's legacy was his prophetic belief that he was God's whip sent to vanquish all sinners. By 1258, the Mongolian army enters Sichuan. Its leader is Emperor Monka Khan, and he has been on the throne for seven years. He is considered a reformer, strong-willed and experienced in warfare and campaigning. Five years earlier, Monge had sent his brother Kublai to establish a southern front in the kingdom of Dali, today's Yunnan province. In the ninth lunar month of that year, at Liopan Mountain, Monke offers up sacrifices to his grandfather, Genghis. Then the army forms into two columns, with the eastern arm heading towards Hubei, while the western arm invades southwards along the Jialing River. At the same time, Monke is recruiting surrounding armies. Generals Wang Dechen and Nui Lin join him, bringing with them a further 40,000 troops. Some 16 years earlier, the Sichuan government officer, Yu Jie, had listened to the advice of his counselors. In 1242, he had constructed a unique defense system across Sichuan. Using rivers as lines and mountains as dots, impregnable fortresses were built along rivers flowing from the north. Of these fortresses, eight were the cornerstones of the defense plan. They were called the Eight Pillars of Sichuan. Six were built along the Xiaoling River and its tributaries, forming layers of defense, with Chongqing as the rear guard. Monke leads his army along the Xiaoling River towards Chongqing. This is his primary target, as it would give him control of the Yangtze River. Fortress after fortress surrender. As Yu Jie's mountain defenses collapse, Monge's armies now occupy the western and northern parts of Sichuan. Finally, only one of the eight pillars remain, defiant in the path of Monge's relentless advance. Known as the Fishing Fortress, it stands 50 kilometers north of Chongqing at Herchuan. In Herchuan, there is a story about the place where the fortress stands. 
在远古的时候，这个嘉陵江、渠江、涪江、三江洪水泛滥，三江六岸的灾民啊，竞相跑到这座山上来了。正在他们濒临死亡的时候，天上降下来一位巨人，他就站在这个石头的前面，手持钓竿呐、啊，从滔滔的洪水当中钓起来无数的鲜鱼，拯救了这些灾民。The fishing fortress overlooks the modern city of Herchuan. In ancient times, the city was called Herzhou, the place where three rivers meet. The city was strategically built on the confluence where the Fu and Chu rivers join the Jiaoling River. Old Herzhou was a ferry terminal with a developed shipbuilding industry. Hundreds of naval ships berthed there. It was a water and land transportation hub linking northern Sichuan with the Yangtze. Chu Kaizhu and Jia Gael Boji Zhen planned to spend time exploring fishing fortress and the surrounding terrain to piece together the events of the Great Siege over seven centuries ago. 我们前面呢就是天眼沟，哦，天眼沟，这一道深井，这道深井呢就把钓鱼城和东面的那个石子城呢，恻然的分成了两边。当年呢，那蒙哥大汗呢，他的他的御营呢，就设在这个天眼沟的对面，东边的石子城上。Monge Khan and his generals plan the best strategy to first take the fortress and then advance as planned south to the Yangtze River. Then the combined force of the Mongolian armies will defeat once and for all the southern Song dynasty. The Mongolian armies are unstoppable in the open on horseback. This is their preferred way of fighting a war. However, as their fast-moving armies had pushed their borders further to the east and to the west, they had also learnt the art of siege warfare. Monge believes that this one insignificant fortress has only two choices, surrender or be crushed. The fishing fortress is quickly surrounded. General Xu Qianzhu's troops take the east mountain thus securing the Jiaoling River to the south of the fortress. More troops under General Wang De Chun cut off the western gate of the fortress. 4,000 Mongolian light cavalry troops patrol Fishing Mountain, while more forces cut off the fortress to the east and north. The highest point of the fortress is Fishing Terrace. From this vantage point, the defending Song general, Wang Jian, can overlook the invading Mongolian army. The enemy camps are discernible through the mist. The defenders know what they are up against. They can't second guess Monge's plan of attack. Monge's objective is to first capture the navy docks and then to breach the fishing fortress from the river front. He orders two of his generals to merge their forces. Chu Kazhu has studied fishing fortress for over 20 years and has walked all over the ancient battlefield. Together with Jagal Burjigen, they explore the tactics of this first plan of attack. Dams built downstream have caused river levels to rise and cover the docks. But old photographs show they were of a staggering size. They had a restraining wall, and it's said that this complicated defense system protected this strategic part of the river. The rear of the docks was connected to the southern outer fortress wall. Defensive walls were built up the slopes on both sides of the dock. Hundreds of Song warships anchored here, along with local and trading vessels that plied along the Jiaoling River to the Yangtze. 
Surrounded on land, the river was the only connection that fishing fortress had to Chongqing. It made military sense to attack the docks. On the third day of the lunar month of February, 750 years ago, a massive Mongolian fleet appears from the mist, and the fiercest of battles from river to bank begins. Monge had planned a single decisive strike. The fortress will be attacked at all gates in unison with the assault on the docks. Fishing fortress will be defeated on all fronts. Fishing Fortress covers 2.5 square kilometers. The outer wall, along with inner walls and the gates, protect the garrison, and at its peak, up to 100,000 people live within the fortress. It is a small and self-sufficient city of great strategic importance. There's possibly a further reason why this fortress was constructed at this site. It is not known if the Southern Song Royal Court knew of the existence of this royal palace. The military may have anticipated that if the regions south of the Yangtze were captured during Mongolian invasions, then the emperor could retreat to the fishing fortress at Sichuan and continue his resistance. Hey, look here, here. What's that? It's like the war that the war was going on. Yes, it's the war that the war was going on. Because the Diyosun people were able to get the war going on. If there was any emergency, Fortuny the battles for the docks and gates are cruel and bloody. Over 36 years of resistance, fishing fortress will witness countless Mongol attacks. Yet experts believe that this attempt was unprecedented in ferocity. In the front of the front, there are Langwai Chen, and Shi Guan Men and Xiao Dong Men. In 1959, the Mongol army was in the middle of the war. He was in the middle of the war, and he was in the middle of the war. In its geographical position, design and construction, Fishing Fortress was a military masterpiece. The walls were built in just six months by 170,000 workers and then over the decades refortified, particularly at the most vulnerable points. The east and west walls above the docks were not protected by steep cliffs and were considered vulnerable. This is the north of 它是一个断面，你看整个断面可以看出来，它和城墙是很很厚的基础。最里面一层啊，就是一二四零年
染净染朴，奉弥戒之命修筑的第一道。中间这一道就是王坚担任了钓鱼城主将过后，他加修的钓鱼城。最外面一道是张觉，后来王坚离开河州过后，张觉继任嘛，他修的这个断面就把三次钓鱼城筑成的经过，你看就反映出来了。那为什么要加？因为这里啊，它是整个南外城的一个屏障。In the first assault on the docks, Mongay's troops attack both from the water and from the landward flanks. <laughs> History records that a young defending Southern Song officer is killed by an arrow. In the confusion that follows, the city wall is breached. Five days, the Mongolian army takes the West Wall area and inflicts heavy losses on the defenders. General Wang Dechen personally leads the attack on the docks. He is a famous and powerful general in the Mongolian army. With his father, he is one of the Ongud people who had surrendered to Mongolia. Because of his reputation, he was appointed vanguard. Wherever he pointed, his scimitar would be conquered. But on that first day of battle, he meets a tough enemy. It is written, the general fought with all his force, capturing hundreds of warships and killing and wounding countless soldiers. Finally, he captures the docks. Despite this, the gates of the fortress stand firm. The Song defenders occupy a commanding position as the heavy fortified walls, the footholds for the trebuchets, and the ammunition at the city gates still show. Here, they are stored with guns. Look, there is a tank behind it. This is the history of the Song defenders. 他这个东西啊，就打出去后，把手机打出去后，他就顺着山势，可以弹起来，打很远的距离。哎，这个如果打中的话呢，肯定是致命的。On lunar February 9th, the Mongol armies begin their second round of attacks. 这三道门呢，就发生过激烈的战斗，但是最激烈的战斗啊，发生在西边的镇西门。This gate is the westernmost point of fishing fortress. Ideal for defense, only one mountain ridge with a narrow passage connects to Jensi Gate. Wang Dechen leads the assault on the gate. In a series of synchronized attacks, the other gates are also assaulted. The Song defenders fight back with all their might, using catapults and even their bare hands. Stones rain down upon the attackers. Even though the Mongolian army scales the steep slopes, Jenshi Gate is built on the edge of a cliff and remains beyond reach. This Wang Zhongcheng is the general of the Gongchang Wang. He was also a part of the fight against the Gongchang Wang. 跟他的兄弟就汪德成一起，那么姚绥提到过这么一句话，叫“抛矢不可及也，踢冲不可接也”，来形容了攻打钓鱼城之困难。抛矢就是抛石机和弓弩，啊，不可及也就是够不着这个钓鱼城，啊，踢冲不可接也，踢就是指云梯，呃，冲就是冲车、工程车，那不可接也就是接近不了这个钓鱼城。Fishing fortresses defenses have been meticulously planned. Eight kilometers of walls rise 10 meters above the natural cliffs. Inner and outer walls are separated so each section is independent of the other. Capturing one area did not mean capturing the whole fortress. The fortress is brilliantly designed to wear down the morale and the resources of the attacking army. A network of pathways connects the inner and outer walls. 
the garrison relied on these to respond quickly to attacks. The efficient and speedy movement of garrison troops to any breach of the outer defences is crucial to the tactics of the defending general, Wang Jin. He may have lost the Battle of the Naval Docks, but Wang Jian has not yet lost the war. He and his subordinates are from the Xingrong Division, the military elite. This division had been withdrawn when North Sichuan was lost. The Xingrong Division are the hawks of the Southern Song Dynasty, fearless fighters. They also unite the civilians inside the fortress. They train the farmers, the villagers, and the craftspeople into a formidable paramilitary force. Wang Jian's resolve and tenacity may have been fortified by the reputation of his adversary, the leader of the Mongol vanguard, General Wang Dechen. Fishing Fortress is now the last bastion in the defense of a dynasty. This was the ultimate power struggle between two great warriors. Over 20 days from February to March, Gen C Gate held firm. It is probable Monge Khan realizes that Fishing Fortress is a bigger obstacle than he had bargained for. He urgently needs to seek out a weakness in Wang Jian's defenses. According to the record in Yuan history, the battle stopped suddenly on lunar month April 3rd, 1259, after 20 days of heavy rain. Zhu 就是西风将王德成就带起他的精锐部队打退了由于这个地方地势非常险在城下面你发现不了这个出口的它非常隐蔽 Khan now changes his strategy Frontal assaults are replaced with small raiding parties These raids constantly probe the Song defences Monge is trying to glean intelligence on the weaknesses along the perimeters of the fortress. In fact, General Wang Jian is concerned there is one particularly vulnerable place. Beyond the northwest Qi Xiong Gate is Saddle Hill. The fortress outer walls are built along the mountain, but at this point the inner city walls are not far away. Below is the largest source of drinking water, Da Tian Chu, Great Sky Lake. The defenders here are not part of the elite Xingrong division, but the chief of the Majun camp and his army. When the 20 days of heavy rain ease, Wang Dechen initiates a raid on Saddle Hill that is tactically different from previous assaults. Yuan history records that Wang led his troops to climb the outer fortress wall during the night and killed many soldiers. Uh, 实际上我想呢, 作为这个, 就是前锋将领来说呢, 他是一个镇守四川十年的这么一个在那儿非常熟悉当地情况的。按照蒙古军的通常做法呀, 
呃，这样的人肯定是就是为钓鱼城这种战场量身定做的突击队员，所以他必须在大汉面前有所表现，打破脑袋也得撞墙。你就是撞不进去，你也得把对方的弱点和虚实给我撞出来。你看这里有个山山势啊。Saddle Hill is much higher than this section of the outer wall. Chu Kaiju believes that the lower slope may have been where the attackers scaled it. It is not known why Wang De Chen's attack failed. Perhaps he was just testing the defences. After being besieged for several months and repelling continuous attacks on all sides, General Wang Jian is also hoping for an end to the stalemate. What will be Mongay's next move? Will fate intervene? Even after years of prolonged incursions, the Mongolian armies cannot adapt to the hot, humid Sichuan summers. Typically, they came in autumn and returned north in spring, replenishing their provisions through plunder. This usually meant a reprieve for the fishing fortress garrison and civilians. They could harvest and plant, and secure provisions for the next onslaught. But in the summer of 1259, despite advice to withdraw, Mongay chooses instead to stand firm. He wants to continue to try and wear down Wang Jian's resistance, perhaps even starve him into surrender. This decision would prove to be the Khan's folly. The fortress's storage of grain from previous harvests is supplemented by farming within the city walls. There are 14 pools, some large enough to hold fish, and 92 freshwater wells. The story goes that people are ordered to throw wheat cakes and fresh fish over the fortress walls to show the Mongol attackers that they will not yield, even if the siege were to last another 10 years. Wang Jian decides that perhaps attack is the best form of defense. On the 1st of Lunar May, under cover of darkness, he leads a small group of elite troops through a secret exit on a do or die mission. This是一张平时它是一个抬水的一个涵洞这就是一个入口这个黄洞的入口为了防止工程的一方发现这个洞就用条石做了一个墙把这个洞一分为二的这洞就变小了你就要俯身而过你如果是外面的进来的话their target is Cobblestone Hill, 2.5 kilometers from the tunnel exit. Wang's mission is to kill Monge Khan. Monge's bodyguards fiercely defend their general. The assault troops push home their attack, prepared to fight to the death. Should the attack be successful and Mongay killed, the siege of fishing fortress will be lifted and the future of the Mongolian Empire will be in jeopardy. No successor has been designated, so a Kurultai, or Council of Chiefs, will have to be called. Infighting and power struggles will play out amongst rival contenders until a new Khan is agreed upon.
outnumbered and with the element of surprise lost, Wang Zhen retreats. Some five or six kilometers from Fishing Fortress, on a lower part of the Jialing River, is a place called Heishu Gorge. This is used to berth a large fleet of naval ships whose mission is to defend the fortress. Four months after the siege began, reinforcements from Chongqing headquarters finally arrive. But how will they fare against the Mongolian fleet? Liundu did General Wang Jian receive word of the rescue mission by secret letter from Chongqing? Even if he hasn't, from the vantage point of the terrace, he can observe the movements of the Mongolian fleet as they maneuver to intercept the Song fleet. Lulu 呃, Chongqing's rescue attempt and subsequent annihilation of its warships is a blow to Wang Zhen and to the morale of the fortress garrison. Mongol general Xu Chenzu triumphs. Mongge, watching the battle from the top of East Mountain, is greatly pleased. He now believes that he could mount a final determining assault upon fishing fortress. In 2005, locals accidentally discovered an ancient tunnel. Judging by its direction and where it is located on the battlefield, it is possible it was excavated during the siege. This Sammina 啊, the position of the tunnel has led to expert speculation that this was part of Monke's strategy for a final strike against the fortress. Since the tunnel is excavated between Saddle Hill and Qishong Gate, it's believed that this is how Wang Dechen and his assault troops gained access to the outer fortress. 首先说呢，地道战法呢，在这个宋代非常流行。宋金之间就广泛的这个使用地道工房，所以这一套战法呢，应该说蒙古军打败了金之后是完全熟悉的。Experts also suggest that at some point in midsummer, the tunnel excavation was completed. It ran down to the foot of the northwestern outer wall where the terrain was not so steep and the fortress wall not supported by a cliff. Monge's plan is for his army to pass through the tunnel and take the outer wall by surprise, then to occupy Saddle Hill and assault the inner fortress wall.
hidden in the tunnel under the fortress wall, Wang Dechen and the advance guard silently wait for the order. This is year 五九年六月五号的深夜，这天深夜啊，汪德成带领他的精锐向钓鱼城的西北外城发动了偷袭。可以说是一个转折点哈，关系到全局的一场大战。对。The order is given. Wang leads his troops from the tunnel emerging inside the fortress's northwestern wall. It is believed that Mongolian troops outside the wall set up scaling ladders to join Wang De Chun in the attack. Tanangji The tunnel breakthrough point chosen by Monke is very accurate and on flat ground. After emerging from the tunnel, Wang De Chen comes to the depression between Saddle Hill and the inner fortress wall. Here Wang and his troops clash hand to hand with the defenders. The Majung camp soldiers are joined by trained civilians. As one force, they try to repel the assailants. The large siege trebuchets of the inner fortress are useless. The defending soldiers take up their weapons and join the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mongol support troops continue to scale the outer wall in waves. Many join the bloody fight. Others guard the breakthrough point. General Wang Jian joins the battle for the outer fortress. He fights bravely and risks his life, but is so badly wounded that he hands over command to his assistant, General Zhang Zhu. The defenders fight to the death. Only their leader survives. The fighting ends at dawn. The invading Mongolian forces have reached the fortresses in a wall. This is the last pillar of resistance. If breached and destroyed, then Eurasia's history would be radically changed. 但是在这个山城不是,你攻破了第一层城,上面还有第二层,换句话说这个攻击是没有连续力的,它不可能就是打破城墙,全城崩溃,这个做不到。With the northwestern outer fortress taken, the most likely place to start the final assault on the inner wall is the depression so gallantly fought over by generals Wang Dechen and Wang Jian. One month later, it is to become the main stage for the decisive battle. 啊這個城牆啊就是釣魚城的內城城牆前面呢就是馬鞍山馬亭站當年就是Wang De Chen goes alone to the bottom of the inner fortress wall and shouts up to the commander, laying down his terms. 
If surrender is immediate, then the lives of both soldiers and civilians will be spared. Courageous Mongolian general dies of his wounds on Luna 21st, aged only 38. On the threshold of his decisive battle, Monge Khan is shaken by the news. Now the strike against fishing fortress will have to be undertaken without his greatest warrior in command. Monge deploys his forces for the final blow. Wang Jen's troops are still resisting they make repeated attempts to retake the northwestern outer fortress. Far away, the Southern Song Emperor and his ministers are monitoring the Sichuan Moor situation, fearful of the outcome. Nanzong 高中的不是临安被金兵攻克了吗最后是从宁波沿海跑的最后金军撤了之后又回到了临安当时都已经预测到就是说万一四川战事不行蒙古军确实沿江东下跟另外的军队都已经会合那简直是势如破竹了 the beginning of Lunar July, the date for the final battle is decided. Professor Jagal Bojigen is certain that at such a critical moment, Monge would pay homage to the grassland gods. What the broken ox bone from the flames conveyed in Lunar July of 1259 is not recorded, but Monge decides on his prediction the exact date of the final battle. On his orders, the Mongolian armies deploy to their attack positions. General Xu Chenzhu's west camp moves to Saddle Hill and concentrates its attack on the northwestern inner fortress. This is a very strong point of view. From this point of view, the north west of the 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 west. Monge Khan beats the war drum. Historical records state that the sound could be heard a dozen miles away. In 1998, a Southern Song inscription was unearthed under Fishing Fortress's Saddle Hill. It appears to be a record of the final battle. However, only 74 characters are recognizable. Khan had thousands of soldiers lined up, rapid, Projecting stones, fortress guidance, died, killed anyone targeted, are words describing the battle that took place. General Wang Jin is on top of the inner wall. Others report that it was his assistant general. Either way, fishing fortress is ready for the fight. The giant trebuchets are aimed toward the enemy. Just opposite on Saddle Hill is Monge's Belvedere a raised tower from where he can spy upon the inner fortress. Today, most of the inner fortress wall of the northern section of fishing fortress is gone. Chu Kazhu, 
believes that the inner wall that once stood here was not supported by cliffs or steep slopes. Therefore, it's possible this was the focal point of the final battle. If this wall is completely destroyed, it will be destroyed. It will be destroyed. anonymous biography records during the battle when a Mongolian scout climbed up to the top of the Belvedere to spy on the inner fortress Song soldiers used trebuchets and fired upon the tower smashing it. often turning points in history hinge on unpredictable moments if the target was indeed the Belvedere then the defense may not have been aware that Monkey himself was below it, beating the war drum. Anonymous biography continues. Monkey was shocked by the wind that the cannons created and was wounded. He died on his way, leaving Fishing Fortress. And it is recorded that the war drums were silenced. The battle continues and thousands upon thousands die on both sides. But it quickly comes to an end, and the Southern Song dynasty lives on for another 20 years. Mengehan的史诗啊,就是据当时最权威的拉斯戴丁史基跟这个智慧你的世界征服者记载呢,他当时就说,Mengehan死在钓鱼城。而且他还写了一个主要是写这个利己跟霍乱他用了个波斯文叫做瓦拉这么一个词那么他没有说是被这个投石机啊或者是被这个炮轰死这么一个蒙哥站起来钓鱼城啊他这个我们有三种史料可
Yet again, Fishing Fortress held out as the last Southern Song stronghold against the Mongolian invasion. In the following year, there was a great drought and famine. In a hopeless position, the last commander of Fishing Fortress, General Wang Ni, agreed to surrender. Kublai Khan issued an imperial edict. Since the Fishing Fortress has surrendered, its guilt can be absolved. No soldier shall arbitrarily kill and plunder and should not take anything away from the residents. After resisting for 36 years, Fishing Fortress was finally defeated. 20 years had passed since Monge Khan first thought he could easily crush this misty and moody fortress in the clouds. Fishing Fortress still looks down on the Jialing River, its gates forever watchful. For hundreds of years, it has been on guard for Sichuan. Today, it still represents not only a masterpiece of military construction, but a beacon of strength. The fishing fortress's history has been long and harsh, but like the many people who lost their lives defending it, it stood strong as it still stands, resolute against the whip of God. <laughs>